We're joined right now by Harmon uh, Hartooning. Uh, he's written a book, and uh, we're going to talk about some of the things. One of the main topics, uh, his book, Getting Back Up, A Story of Resilience, Self-Acceptance, and Success. Uh, it has a unique story to tell us about his American journey in here. And one thing that he really wants to stress is how you can gain strength from the trauma that takes place in your life. Welcome, uh, Mr. Hartooni. How are you doing this morning? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Anytime, sir, anytime. Uh, we were just kidding you earlier. It's like 65 degrees. You're out in Los Angeles. And he said, am I allowed to say that? And like, yeah, we, <laughs> like, we, no. we got inspired of something here in West Texas. So, yeah, you can say it's 65. Trust me, warm. folks. Now, I you... told him it was not all right to say 65 <laughs> degrees on this show. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Harmon grew up uh, in America and in Iran. It's kind of a unique uh, uh, way to look at it because most people who come or immigrate to this country, nine times out of ten, they don't go back. Well, he was born here. Uh, to Iranian parents, went back to Iran, uh, grew up there for 19 years. And, and, and tell us what some of those challenges were in your country for you as a, as a human being, as a person. Well, uh, first of all, thank you all of you to have me. I will just give you some bullet point of the challenges. I, my parents are Christian Armenian, so we grew up in Iran as a minority. Mm -hmm. And that alone has some challenges. It's and the it, it's an Islamic country, but people are beautiful and nice and kind. But when my mom, I was 30 days old and took me back, um, it was right when revolution happened. So women had no rights and they, she couldn't leave the country again. So she was stuck for 19 years. That's why I couldn't come back either. And um, growing up, it, I grew up with a small community, but I went to we had to follow the new law, and uh, I, I had a father who was extremely successful and very um, teaches everything very the wrong way. So um, I, a lot of people that I know, they will be challenged with their father with very small challenges. I will say all my life has been pretty rough if you read the book. But I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot um, how to survive in a society that I am outcast at for many, many reasons. Um, it's funny, when I speak Farsi, people say, where are you from? I, you have an accent and you don't look like us. And when I speak Armenian and Armenians were like, where are you from? You don't speak Armenian and you look different. Right. You know, and obviously I look different here. So I just yeah. <laughs> never had blend in. But then um, at age of 18, I um, hit a bus back home and I came out of the car, my car got totaled, nothing happened to me. And another car hit me and my both legs broke. Oh. And um, I couldn't walk for like 11 months, three surgeries. I was told I will never walk. And I had um, taken anything anyone said, it will help you from calcium to fish oil to stew of I don't know what animal to anything you can imagine. I was just putting it in my mouth to trying to have the miracle work. And and then I moved uh, to United States at um, February of 2001 with a walker. And I will say I never looked back and I started a new life, completely brand new. I buried everything else back home. So when you experience trauma like that, how do you get out of it? You know, how do you put that positivity ahead of you and, you know, focus that you're not going to live that way. You're going to walk again. Great question. I, I will say that I don't have a choice. It wasn't an um, opportunity that I can, uh, I hear sometimes, especially with the young generation right now with me that I'm just going to uh, find myself. I need a minute to, to me. I, I didn't have that. I brought, I came by myself and I brought my brother and sister. We were broke. We had one bread in a fridge. One day when I came back from school, I had to make it work that day, not tomorrow, that day. And so I didn't have the chance to sit down and think about I'm 19. I get to have fun. I, um, I can decide what I want to do four years from now. My mom or dad can give me some money. I had no hope. So I think if you have a false hope, as you're going through challenges that actually can hold you back. 
And number two, I think it's important to know wherever you are in life, your second, the next chapter is not written yet. And you're responsible of that. So if you accept today, then you can go. It doesn't mean you're ignoring your past. I call it five minutes funeral. Um, I, I'm in real estate. I lose a listing. I don't get it. That's fine. I'm upset. But five minutes. You cannot have five days. If, uh, since I didn't get this, I'm just not going to work for another five days and cry over it. So I developed this habit and early on because I had to survive from everything in high school, being bullying, uh, bullied and on and on. So I developed this skill set. So if you are challenged, and then, by the way, I know how easy it is for someone to be positive and excited when their bills are paid, they're healthy, they're excited about everything else in life. It's very challenging when you have no money, you just lost your job. We all know pandemic affected a lot of people just now. I, it's so hard to, but if you just write down for the things you have, versus what just happened or you don't have, it can be a lot worse than I am not the worst story. And I, when I hear some other challenges in mine is goes away. It's just nothing. Yeah. Um, that's my philosophy. Go ahead, well, Chuck. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I realized there were certain struggles that you had to undergo growing up in Iran and coming here to the United States. Can you explain some of that struggle to me, please? Oh, wow. I tell you a lot. Um, I, my mom was abused by my father a lot. Okay. Him looking back, he wouldn't think that was an abuse because it just, a, a lot of people go through that and but wives cannot talk about it, do anything. If my dad, who was not, but was extremely drug addict and had no money and was beating us and locking us in the house, my mom could not leave him because if mm. she did, she would lose the kids. So wow. she stayed around to keep us safe. Then I had to go to a school and I wanted to be a medical, go to be a doctor and in Iran, if you're Christian or you are minority, you have a less percentage of a chance to be accepted. So I had to go to Islamic school, learn Arabic and Quran, and then leave the school afternoon, go to Christian school to do that. So it was a lot more work to be done to be normal or accepted. Um, and then of course, um, you know, sometimes you will have a religious police Again, not the population, but rigid police. Um, I remember one time in the, in a classroom, I was very good in math. I was very, very good in math. And I went down on a chalk, grabbed the chalk, and I did the, uh, solved the problem on the, uh, the, the chalkboard. And the teacher looked at me and said, where are you from? And I said, uh, Armenian. And he, he had a piece of paper like this and brought clothes and said, put that chalk there and then drop the chalk in a trash can. Wow. Because, you know, um, it can be dirty. So I'm dirty. They shouldn't. And again, I'm sure he wasn't one ignorant person. My students in the class were shocked. But there are some minor, I mean, I call it minor because that person's behavior wasn't like, okay, then I hate Matt or I'm not going to go to school. Right. So um, there, that just in Iran, and then you move here, and then that's a whole different challenges to the same community here that you want to belong to, and they're all struggling to survive. Then here you have to decide the opinion because in the United States, I feel like um, as much as we all have to, can have opinion, and yet if your opinion is a little bit too off than others, then they become a group. So then. I couldn't have an opinion because I didn't want to have a struggle with, again to be in a different set group. So, and I can, again, I can go on on this. Yeah. For, yeah. The, how right. it was. Now, w one of the things you say uh, in your book that just struck me was about accepting yourself. And, 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 and I, I say this too, sometimes you have to accept people where they are, not where you want them to be. Uh, you say you can't change your inside by changing your outside. And in our society today, we really push the outside. 
We think that's the whole package. Uh, tell us a little bit more about why you feel like it's about the internal change instead of the external trappings of clothes, haircut, whatever. Uh, I'll start with my culture. It's um, we my culture is designed to live for others. Right. So when someone passes in my culture, everyone who hasn't even talked to each other, they show up and they cry and dramatic behavior. And yet the person who died, they, they haven't talked to them for years. So it's 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 a lot is like to show and demonstrate. But then move, then the, there's no uh, meat on that. Right. And it's um, I, I was watching and I, I meditate a lot and. And a few years ago, I there's this Indian um, guru that was sharing that when you don't brush your teeth for 10 days and you go in a conference room, you still don't know how much your mouth smells, but 10 people in the room will know. It's a human nature to not smell their own mouth, but m smell others first. Mm -hmm. And the mouth is the closest thing to your nose. And it's a naturally, we like to say that didn't work. Look at him, look what he did wrong, or he has, he has it so lucky, but we don't see within. And it's not something you learn overnight, but I had to uh, learn early on in a young age that be so calculated and try to be what I wanna do. So I couldn't focus on people around me. And uh, honestly, it has helped me so much to even move on fast. When someone rejects me, I, in my business, it's all rejection, uh, which I call it just no, it's like not yet. But you got to just be in a habit. You can't do it overnight. And you have to surround yourself with people that they're, have the same mindset. That positivity, all pulling the same way. Uh, yeah. Right now, Harmon is based in Los Angeles, one of the most successful real estate entrepreneurs about a billion dollars in sales last year. So he, he's taking care of business. He has a family, his husband, three children via surrogate, uh, and this powerful story of overcoming it. And, and I think this is, speaks to a lot of things in our society right now. Uh, we sometimes tend to lay back and play the victim. And we relish that role. We, you got people who are professional victims in our world today. And, and you don't have to be that. You can write the end of your story. You can get up off the mat no matter what it is, a, a life near death experience in an accident, uh, being raised in a country that really didn't look at you as equal, and uh, now coming to America, learning what you have to do, uh, you can find that strength in the tragedy. And I think that's an important lesson to learn during this year of COVID and everything else that's going on in our world, is you can be who you want to be. Uh, Harmon, thank you so much. The name of the book is Getting Back Up. A story of resilience, self acceptance, and success. Thank you for taking time and hanging out with us here on the chat. I appreciate you all. Thank you for having me. Thank we'll you. We'll have you back soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank all you. right. We're going to take a break.